Good morning. This is Michael DeVille coming to you from beautiful Phoenix, Arizona. This is August 25th, 2020. Tatum and I are in the beautiful studios of West USA, and we're here to talk another episode of a Creating Wealth uh, seminar. So this is for you to spark, hopefully we spark your interest in some financials, that you have some ideas that uh, we're bringing to you each and every week. But before we get started, I really want to thank West USA for providing this platform to me that I can uh, reach you and maybe uh, spark your interest in, in some financial wealth. And this is my opportunity to give back because as you know, real estate has been very, very good to me and I want to give back. And West USA would like your life to be so much better and to be everything that you'd like it to be. Now, today we're going to talk about divergence in the marketplaces. I couldn't have picked a better day to talk about divergence than what we have today. So next week, I want to make sure you do not miss next week. Now, next week, we're going to do a case study about an actual property that's been bought here in Phoenix and what it has returned over the life of the investment. This is going to be an absolutely must-see, do-not-miss um, webinar next Tuesday, so you cannot miss this. We're going to be talking about cash flow and capital gains right here in residential uh, real estate here in Phoenix, Maricopa County. Going to be absolutely do-not-miss, so we want to make sure that you're here. So this week, we're talking about divergence, and of course, what exactly is divergence? Well, typically the stock market is going to track along with the economy. So keep in mind that stocks get their value by earnings. Stocks get their value as their business expands. And of course, when the GDP is going up, most businesses are doing very, very well. That's why they say the stock market is a barometer of what the economy is. And once in a while, this does not happen very often, but once in a while you get a divergence where stocks are really doing well and economy is not. Now, keep in mind, just in March, we had this terrible collapse in the, in the stock market and it has recovered. It's actually gone to all time highs, just touched them. Not very much, but just a little bit. So it's what we'd say it has recovered to its pre-collapse. However, the economy certainly has not. So although we are much better we still have 21 million Americans who would like to work that can't, and we have problems across the globe. Now the stock market is diverting from the GDP, and it's distorting what people's idea of what's going on in the market. So not only is the stock market diverting from the economy, but the stock market is diverting from itself in the fact that what they say is breadth, so it's bad breadth. And what that means is that we don't have all kinds of uh, stocks. Remember, it's a stock market or a market of stocks. And a lot of this wealth is being set into just five or six uh, stocks, and they are distorting the marketplace. And, of course, those stocks are Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, and Google. And, of course, now we've got Tesla. And Tesla is an exact example is that Tesla's earnings, the price to earnings ratio, which typically in a good market is right around 15 or 16, Ford in a good year was around six or seven. Tesla is over a thousand, a thousand on its PE. So that means that this is off the charts. This is like an historic PE. So that's saying that there is something wrong in the economy. It's diverting from the, the actual PEs, and of course, the stock market itself. So instead of being an S&P 500, it's become the S&P 5. And of course, these stocks are adding six, 36 to 40% of the market is in these stocks. So when people pile onto these stocks, they really drive the indices, and it distorts what's going on. It diverts from the actual uh, economy. So one of the reasons that this is happening is that we've got historic liquidity that's been put into the marketplace. We're talking about a $6.3 trillion of liquidity 
that was put into the economy in 60 days. So this puts an enormous amount of liquidity into the economy. And that shows up first in the most liquid markets there are. And of course, that's the stock and bond markets. And, and this liquidity, of course, is adding to some of the uh, gains in the S&P. But is it a real gains? So when you have this divergence, this is a great big red flag that something is not well. So you, what you need to do, or maybe you should, here's a suggestion for you, is to talk to your financial advisor. If you've got great gains in these marketplaces, typically when you buy a stock, you say, here's my entry point, here's my exit point. So when you buy a stock, you say, if I buy it at 100 and it goes to 130, I'm going to take my profits. Some of these stocks have gone from 100 to 200. One would say you've gotten your money out of that, and you might talk to your financial advisor and think of using those funds because sometimes it's really nice to take a profit. I mean, it's wonderful to take a profit. You can't go broke taking a profit and take that profit that you've earned. You've had a really nice run. Take that profit that you've earned and transfer it to a different asset class because we have red flags in both the stock market and in the bond market. So there's a lot more volatility in these than you might think. So this economic liquidity that's been put into the stock market kind of blurs what's going on in the real economy. And it just adds to the fact that you need to be sure of what you're doing. This is not a time for you to be risk this is more a time for you to be risk averse and be looking for very conservative and consistent econ uh, consistent investments. So we already talked about the fact that this injection of liquidity is, is distorting uh, the stock market. It has not necessarily gotten to Main Street yet. So Main Street is seeing lots of shuttered retail stores. We still have restaurants that aren't open. We have gyms that aren't open. We have lots of businesses that aren't open. And of course, there's no venues for uh, entertainment. These all translate into business on Main Street. So Main Street itself is still struggling. Now, when you see the fact that when you start going up and you just kind of touch where the market was pre-collapse, that's often a top. And if it's a top, sometimes you want to take some of your profits. And that's what this divergence is telling you, is that there is a, a risk in the marketplace. You need to talk to your financial advisor. Again, find out what kind of risk that you're taking and maybe take a profit. Same with the bonds. Keep in mind that we have liquidity that's been put into the economy. That liquidity is going into the liquid markets. And the two the most liquid is going to be stocks. And then you have bonds. So these two are really taking the benefit of, uh, of this liquidity. It does not last forever, though. There's an injection, and then it moves through the economy. Typically, it takes 12 to 18 months for real estate to start feeling the effects of that liquidity. So we're going to be a little bit, a little bit behind that curve. So that puts your stocks and bonds at risk because it's a distorted valuation. So if you have these enormous profits, talk to your financial advisor about taking your profit and moving it to a different asset class. Now keep in mind that stocks and bonds are sold on Wall Street. So when you have problems on Wall Street, those uh, assets are directly affected. You might start thinking of redirecting or redistributing or diversifying your portfolio into a different asset class. Now, I've already mentioned the fact that real estate will not feel the, the uh, 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 injection of liquidity for 12 to 18 months. That means in 12 to 18 months, if you think the market's good now, it's going to be really, really good in 12 to 18 months. My suggestion, and I cannot say this any clearer, Take your profits on that you've made in the stock and bond market and buy some real estate. The real estate is a separate asset class. It gives cash and it protects you from the divergences. Here in, in the, one of the great markets of the United States, keep in mind we have three great states that are just doing terrific. That's Florida, 
Texas and Arizona, the growth in these states is just this side of phenomenal. So real estate putting a different asset into your portfolio and into your wealth is going to protect you from that because real estate is only correlated eight to nine percent. So if Wall Street again has another problem, real estate typically is not affected. They are only correlated about eight or nine percent. Now, we've talked about the fact that uh, what kind of recovery we may have. I kind of think we're going to have a W recovery. It would stand to reason that with 21 million people, I don't think that our economy is going to go straight up. So I'm thinking that a lot of the problems in the economy have not yet been realized. And keep in mind, a V is the left side of a W. So just be cautious. I could be wrong. Again, talk to your financial advisors, find out what's good for you. But here you have an absolute tremendous opportunity that transfers some of your wealth that you've earned on, on the stock market and the bond market into a completely separate asset class. Real estate is in a mid-cycle. So we have a long time yet before we come to the end of the cycle in real estate. So that's not going to come for four or five years. So you have plenty of time to enjoy and earn and season your investments, and they will protect your portfolio because they will consistently give you income. This is a basic shelter need. This, pro this investment is going to give you income the next month you buy it. If you buy it in September, October, you're going to start getting income from your investment. How much better does it get from that? So next week, we're going to be talking about capital gains. So um, we're going to be giving a uh, quick seminar next week. We're going to be a, a uh, talk about how these were going to work for you. We're going to talk about your uh, capital gains. We're going to talk about the income that you can earn from these properties. This is going to be a great lifeboat for you if you're into the stock and bonds. Let me, let me just back up a little bit. Those of you that are struggling, and particularly if you have any clients that uh, their businesses were in the uh, social arena, like uh, they had uh, restaurants or bars or venues, maybe they were musicians or artists, uh, ball players, and of course, a lot of the revenues have been curtailed. Wouldn't it be nice for you to have a separate stream of cash coming in each and every month to cushion? the money that you're not getting from an economic downturn, that's what real estate is designed for you to do. So if they have problems in New York, the problems are not going to translate into problems for you. Your income will keep coming in month after month after month because everyone needs a place to live. And of course, we've talked about the trends that we have here in the three great markets of the United States, specifically here in Arizona, we have Californians coming here every single day. And of course, Arizona is experiencing 187 Californians every single day coming to Arizona. There are 35 million people living in Southern California. If they started losing population of 100, 200, or 300,000 people moving to Arizona, they wouldn't even notice. And I'm going to tell you that is very, very possible that in these great markets, if we have further turmoil across the country, you're going to see people voting with their feet and they are going to come to these great markets. This is a trend that's going to be probably a decade long. And if you want to take your wealth and transfer it into a real estate class where you're going to earn income, you're also going to earn capital gains because of the demand is coming. So it's not a matter of how you can do it. We here at the West USA are here to help you do that. If you are an agent and you want to make your, your uh, career better, if you want to learn more about some of the financial uh, topics we talk about, if you want to get more involved with the finances, we're here to help you with that. If you'd like it to do it yourself, it's just a matter of picking up the phone and calling or emailing. We are here to help you do that. So with all the growth that we have and with such a conservative asset as residential rentals that are doing so well right now, how can you not be doing that? Just pick up the phone and call and we are more than happy 
to help you. So if you have comments, you're welcome to just email to Creating Wealth at West USA. There's a flyer that you can send to your, your clients. Talk about what we talked about today. Hopefully it sparks some interest. This is one of the great divergences. You have an absolute opportunity to change asset classes right now and to put it into something that has probably a lot longer on its cycle. And it certainly will not be as volatile. You, if you want to send out this flyer, you certainly can. Just ask for this flyer at creatingwealth at westusa.com. If you would like to get involved and learn more about finances, learn more about investments, call us at 602-942-4200. Just pick up the phone. We're here to help you. This is a service for you. It's for me to give back to you. This is what makes my... Uh, my day is so much better when I get a call and I have someone ask me how to do this. I'm here to help you. I've done it for 45 years. If you'd like to get involved with maybe uh, uh, getting a designation, if you'd like to get the uh, uh, Certified Residential Investment Advisor, you might want to contact Todd at uh, uh, Todd, M Todd C. Menard at uh, westusa.com. Or, of course, you can always uh, ask for Todd at Creating Wealth at West USA. If there's anything I can do, just be sure you pick up the phone and give me a call. My very best to you. Bye-bye now.